Who is Jason Blake? When did you first realise that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? How long's Global Soccer Education been going for now? When did you get your first customer? Welcome to the Jod Pod, a micro podcast where we interview CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, authors, and coaches. Today we are joined by Jason Blake, the founder of Global Soccer Education. Great to have you with us today, JB. Great to see you, James. How are you? I'm very good, thanks, pal. We look like Mastercard. We do. We do. Priceless. Absolutely. That's yeah. It. That's yeah. It. Cool. Not. Don't leave home without it. That was a rival, wasn't it? I think we're looking at eighties commercials now which yeah, yeah it's a bit old-fashioned anyway um for those of us uh, who don't know who you are jb who who is jason blake well that's that's a big question um founder of global soccer education uh background in professional football or where i now live in canada soccer um of over 20 years working in the professional game pr- predominantly in england uh in the academy system working with uh some some high potential young players, a few that have gone on and, and gone on to represent their country. So I've um, been very fortunate to, to work with some good players and then the career took me around the world. I went to, went to China for a short time and then uh, actually due to a young lady, uh, ended up in Canada. That's fantastic. And you're now the founder of Global Soccer Education, your own business. Yep. When did you first realise that you wanted to be an entrepreneur and start your own business? It, it, good, good question, James. And, and probably th- the second half of that 20 years working in the game for different professional clubs, I started to think one day I want to run my own coaching business, coaching players. And I thought about it for a long time. And then probably about three or four years ago, I started to get frustrated with the information that was out there for coaches in, in, and You'd think there wasn't enough information. Well, actually, it's the opposite. There was far too much. And filtering it and for beginner coaches or or aspiring coaches to to, um, kind of make their way in the game and become a coach was really difficult because there was just too much information. So it it was like that that light bulb moment where it's like, I want to help coaches. I want to support coaches making their way in the game. Although I'd worked at the elite end of the game, um, I remember when I first stepped in as a beginner grassroots community coach and I want to help them. So although for maybe 10 years I thought I was going to run a, a coaching players business, actually it transpired that Global Soccer Education was created to help coaches. That's fantastic. And how long's Global Soccer Education been going for now? Uh, I, I set, I left China two years ago Mm -hmm. and I set the business up just as I left but at that stage I was still kind of I had some options coming into Canada um, so it was always going to be just a little side thing um, until further notice Um, coming into a country like this I have to go through the immigration processes and setting up businesses and all that stuff and I want to make sure I do those things properly because this is happy ever after for me in Canada so I don't want them to kick me out so uh, it's been a deliberately slow process of building it gradually. And when did you get your first customer? Or how did you get your first customer? Uh, <clears throat> my first customer um, was probably about a year ago. And it was uh, a, a small community club that wanted a little bit of uh, kind of guidance for their coaches, um, volunteer parent coaches that have all the commitment and desire to support the children of the club, but have never done a coaching qualification, very nervous about doing an educational process uh, for something they're doing recreationally just to make sure the kids have got a club and somewhere to play. So it was a, it was a workshop series going in and just helping them understand some of the basics that will simplify what was a very daunting process for them to stand in front of 12 young 10-year-olds and try and put on a coaching session that was going to be both fun and educational. And how did they find out about you? I had been speaking to a few people locally and uh, here there's an association that governs all of the kind of local football clubs and I'd got speaking to that association and uh, this club was speaking to the association at a separate time and was saying, you know, we've got some new coaches coming in. They're like, oh, there's this guy, Jason Blake, who, you know, 
done quite well in his coaching career previously and you know strange that he's arrived in our kind of part of the world but maybe he can help so it was uh, it was just an informal conversation with their governing body that kind of put us in and they made a uh, just a, a, a email introduction and that was it I think there's an interesting extrapolation extrapolated uh, learn that you can get from that for, for any anybody that's listening that, that wants to be an entrepreneur is that often you don't have to go direct to cli- to customers or clients to, to, to win them. Actually having a relationship with a an organization, a, a, an ombudsman, um, a, you know, a group that represents a certain field is, is a really interesting way of actually getting started and getting your name out there. It was really helpful, James, because in terms of the level of qualification and experience I've got, there's not many people of my background or or kind of football qualification history where I am in Canada Mm. so it would have been easy to go in and 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 kind of let them know who I am and and I'm the big you know soccer coach that's arrived I didn't I was very curious about what they do this was the governing body very curious about what they do very curious about how the coaches develop very curious about their challenges and their pain points and um, I would listen more than I would talk and I think that really helped um I think it, it could have gone the other way if I went in and just let everybody know who I was and what I've done and this is me. And so I think that was really helpful as well. And that's actually helped me because now um, I've been here two years and a year on, I'm now speaking similar to what you just said. I'm not speaking direct to the, the grassroots coaches, but I'm speaking direct to their clubs. And I'm trying to build relationships and get a greater understanding of the clubs and and what they're trying to achieve and their ambitions their philosophies but also their challenges um and then within the clubs there's could be 10 coaches could be you know 50 coaches so i'm trying to i'm trying to work at organization level now in terms of my communication because it's very difficult with limited time to be able to speak to everybody so i'm trying to go in a little bit higher up the hierarchy to to hopefully get able to work with more people but i can't speak to all of them individually so i'm trying to go in at a a higher level of their organization yeah it sounds like a very leveraged uh you know action uh, to take and i think it's something that a lot a lot of entrepreneurs can 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 learn from um but you, you you i think you're the great underseller of what you do but but jb i'd love for you to go hard on this what you know what what is global soccer education what do you what what's your vision for it what are you trying to achieve It's a great question, James, and, and as with any probably new idea or startup or, or you know early business, that, that evolves a little bit, but um, I think the main thing is I want to be that I want to be the hub of the party for, for for coaches that are just beginning. Where do they go to get help? There's all this information. Who who do they pick the phone up to? Who who do they speak to? Now, look, that might not be directly to me on my phone, but maybe it's my YouTube channel. Maybe it's my podcast. Um, maybe they become part of, of the Facebook group that I've, I've created. And it's it, I just want people to know there's somewhere they can go where where the dial of noise is turned down and we can we can signpost them into places that will really help them and they haven't got to spend like I did. And it, it, it takes a long time to realize where are good sources of information? Who are the, who are the coaches out there in, in the public domain that give good information? Where, where are there good practices that are actually tailored to support the coach rather than just let's put more content out? And, and that's really time consuming. So I, I really want to be, I really want global soccer education to be recognized as a, uh, a filter that makes things easier for coaches because there's enough out there for elite coaches that there's an incredible amount of information out there and and really good information but for the beginner coaches i think i think it's a different landscape and um i want to i want global soccer education to kind of be seen as a, a a tool to help coaches where where do i start what do i do you know all those challenging gremlin voices in their head about you can't do this there's you aren't able to be like the top coaches in the world and i want to be that support mechanism 
where it's like you actually can do it and it's not as difficult as maybe you think or the internet makes you think you know you haven't got to be a, an English Premier League manager um, to be effective for the group of boys or girls that you're you're working with I think that's so interesting the way that you've highlighted that and I think you've what you've spoken to there is the pains that someone might be feeling that makes it a no-brainer for them to to reach out and get in contact and you know I'm looking forward to see how your YouTube and the, the content that you produce um, grows over the next uh, next year or so, JB. That sounds uh, sounds really cool. You seem very excited by it. Very much so. It, I remember my journey at, at many different points. Even I, th- I think it doesn't matter whether you're 10 years and, and you're one of the highest qualifications or whether you're 10 weeks and you're unqualified. We all have challenges. We all find things that we might be a little bit uncomfortable with and, and I think part of the entrepreneur world not just whether it's in football coaching or whatever area we're all challenged by stepping outside of our comfort zone and I had some people along my journey that did help me but there were many times along my journey where I didn't know what I was doing and sometimes we can overthink things but one of the strong things that I did throughout my career is not recklessly but I took the step and when I felt uncomfortable or I'm like, well, I'm not quite sure this, is, you know, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to do it. Whereas I think sometimes people may be uh, super safe and they stay in their little secure, comfortable area. And then that's where, you know, we maybe miss opportunities to either grow and develop individually or to really inspire and change the lives of people that we work with. So that's such a huge motivation for me that I can now use my experience and and that experience isn't like yeah when I did really well at this but actually when I overcome that challenge or I overcome that that you know and something that you and I talk about sometimes is the gremlins those those negative voices in our head that you know I want I want to use my times of, of being you know successful in overcoming that fear and challenging my comfort zone to inspire others to do the same because when you do it's it's a uh, it's a fascinating place on the other side. That's awesome, JB, because you know the, the whole point of this podcast is to inspire people to step out of their comfort zones, to go and create something and start something. And, and listening to you here, there, that's, you know, that's really inspirational. And I hope that people listening are, are, will, will want to take action. And I'm sure they'll reach out to you to, uh, to hear more about your story. I just want to add one thing, James, which I think, you know, and you said that I never really do the, under, like, I do the underselling bit really well. One thing about me, and, and particularly my industry, is there's this perception of you have to have played professionally to get the, the credibility to maybe get the highest coaching qualification or to work at a certain level. Yeah. I never played professionally. I, I didn't even play at a great level of semi-professional football. I played at, at, at an OK level. And so really, I perhaps wouldn't be seen as one of the people that would end up achieving the highest coaching qualification or to become an academy director of a a professional or Premier League club, um, which I did those things. So I think whenever there's those kind of boundaries or those perceptions that you can or you can't because of what you've done or what you've not done, ignore them. Be resilient, be dogged, be determined, and you can break through those. Um, And I'm, I'm a walking example of it. So you know, hopefully that alone is enough to inspire people to, to, uh, you know, work hard to achieve their aspirations and don't let anybody else tell you you can't. Awesome. Because you can. You can see that on a t-shirt, can't we, JB? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Qu- quick fire questions. Go for it. You ready? Quick fire. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite app or SaaS product that you use every day? I'm, I'm, I'm like an absolute Mac addict so you know i'm not really in a massive space of of uh of kind of new tools um yet but i would probably say apple notes which i know might sound a bit bland but i must go in apple notes every day any thoughts i write them down in apple notes any kind of uh, anything I'm working on or thinking about in terms of I, I done my first YouTube video yesterday and my kind of um, framework for the video was all done in Apple Notes. And I know it's easy to say, but it, obviously it's on my it's on my phone. It's on my MacBook. It's on my my iMac. So um, it's just great that it, it syncs across and it's so clean. It's so I hate clutter. I hate 
funky things. I just like it. It's clean, simple, easy to use, perfect. Apple Notes. Fantastic. I, I, one thing about Apple Notes that I really like is dictation onto it. I think it's yeah, absolutely, absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, what's your most recommended book, JB? Yeah, good question. And, and th there's... To say that there's a single one is very difficult. Um, but for the entrepreneur world... Oh, my God, there's, there's two that I really want to say. There's three that I really want to say. Bring three. Come on. Um, Come on, JB. I'll let you have three. Let's go. Okay, right. For... Uh, as a coach, but in terms of the entrepreneurial world, processes and dealing with the details, um, the score takes care of itself, which is a uh, Lessons of Leadership book by Bill Walsh, the former San Francisco 49ers coach. So although it's not football, it's American football, incredible book. That's my, if you could see my bookshelf, that's the book that's so worn and tattered because it's gone all around the world with me. I've read it on most airplane flights I've ever been on and in China, you go on a lot of them. So that's definitely one. Um, for anyone that's got gremlins, for anyone that's got imposter syndrome, for anyone that's scared of putting themselves out there, um, uh, the courage to be disliked. Uh, the author escapes me right now, but I had huge challenges of stepping out into the, the digital world of podcasts, YouTube, etc. Um, that book was incredibly helpful. And then the last one, which actually is near me, and this isn't deliberate, but I was reading it last night, is Show Your Work by Austin Kellyon. Um, and similar thing, not just about giving you the courage to, to, to put what you do out there. Like you said earlier, I undersell myself better than most. Um, I don't like talking about me. I don't like bigging up what I've done and, and that kind of side of things. But when you have good people in your network that remind you what you've done and, and how what you've done can really influence people, it's important you put it out there. Um, I feel really bad I didn't say The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, and that book definitely deserves a mention. So okay. two things, James, only, you know about Only me. four One, books. <laughs> yeah, two, two things about me that you've now learned. Quick fire is not something I'm very good at, and keeping it to one single thing when yeah. it comes to books, no chance. Uh, you, remind, you remind me a little bit of the Spanish Inquisition. Um, True that. Yeah, there's a Monty Python reference for anybody who's old enough yeah. to recognise that. Uh, who's your favourite YouTuber or podcaster? I think it's an easy one for, for you and I because we're, we're, we're both kind of involved in the network that he's created, and that's Noah Kagan. Um, and, and the reason being is actually it's when I was in China, and I'd started to think – quickfire's gone, by the way, sorry. I started to, uh, to realise that the, ch the, 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 the job in China wasn't what I wanted it to be, and I was thinking about, you know, what next, exit routes. I actually listened to a Tim Ferriss podcast, but his guest was Noah Kagan. I'd never heard of Noah Kagan – didn't really know much about him. And the thing I really liked is Noah Kagan spoke business, but he spoke in a way like you were down the pub having a, having a drink with him. He said it in easy to understand ways. And that hooked me straight away. It's like, wow, absolutely. This guy's talking about business jargon things that I wouldn't have understood, but he's saying it in a way that, so he hooked me there. Then I started listening to his podcast. And I reckon 95% of what I do for global soccer education has come from business advice from Noah, either through his podcast, his YouTube channel, or we're actually, I don't know if I can say this, but we're in a Slack group that he created and we get some, some industry insights through that as well. So, um, yeah, it'd have to be Noah Kagan. Fantastic. And, and uh, YouTube as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And funny enough, just as I put my YouTube first video out yesterday, I spent a few hours previously just going through some of his old YouTube videos because I like to, uh, one, get a reminder of the messages uh, from an advice point of view, but I like to see, right, how did he film? What kind of thumbnails did he use? Because I'm curious in that way. So I, I use his, his YouTube channel as a, a good barometer for things that I'm going to do in the future. The, uh, the best artists steal. There's a Picasso quote there, isn't it? That's what Picasso said. I think it is. And funny enough, this is a, a follow-up book to Steal Like an Artist. I've not read that one yet. Yeah. but Up to five yeah. books now you recommended. That's, that's pretty good for the I've the not read it, so I can't recommend it. <laughs> it could be horrendous. <laughs> Who is going to be the next Elon Musk or Denise Coates, the CEO of Bet365? That's a big question. And I think from a global point of view, very difficult to comment. So I am going to make it global. I'm going to make it global soccer education. 
putting it in a niche, in a, a, a context of my industry, it's going to be me. I'm going to have a huge impact on grassroots soccer, which I think is the most highly participated sport around the world. It is not professional soccer, but grassroots soccer. So the opportunity to influence people is going to be huge. It is huge already, and I'm only just starting. So, yeah, it sounds arrogant, but I undersell myself brilliantly, but I'm going to change the tone. That's the most arrogant thing you've ever said, and I love it. Thanks for that, uh, Thanks for that, JP. And where's the best place for people to find you online? Yeah, so the, the best place... Uh, and, it, and in fairness, you know, I'm at the beginning of my journey, so um, Facebook is probably the best place to find me. That's where I'm, I'm building my community. Uh, I say my community, the, the, the GSE, the Global Soccer Education Community. Um, and then there's going to be places that sprout out of that. So the podcast is, you know, actually what, what I started, and, and I think we're about 11, 11 episodes in. Um, YouTube started yesterday. Um, so for anybody that's listening to this in 10 years' time, that's... Uh, May 10th, 2021. Um, but really, everything's Facebook. So cool. um, c- come and come and find me on Facebook, and that will signpost anybody to where they need to go from from my part. Excellent. And I think also people are going to be interested in getting in contact with you that maybe you've come from soccer, but now want to get involved in entrepreneurship, and you might be able to put some things into their language um, so they could reach uh, out reach out personally to you. That'd be really interesting. And, and I would encourage that. Um, I'm now part of a couple of groups where I'm involved in in business consultancy, mentoring. Yeah. Um, they like to get someone from, and there's a lot of crossover between sport and business. So business likes to get people out of sport and sport likes to get people out of business to give an external view. So I'm, I'm now involved in a couple of little business groups to, to help entrepreneurs. So yeah, it's something I'd be happy to do. Fantastic. Thanks, JB. There we have it. JB is the founder of Global Soccer Education, founded to help soccer coaches navigate their way through the ever-increasing amount of coaching content, information, and data. He managed to get his first customer by building relationships with a governing body and getting a referral. JB's favorite app is Notes, Apple Notes. His most recommended book, well, he recommended five, but we'll go for the four, is The Score Takes Care of Itself by Bill Walsh. The Courage to be Disliked, Show Your Work by Austin Kilion, and Seven Habits of Effective People by Covey. He loves watching and listening to Noah Kagan's YouTube and podcast channel. He thinks we should be keeping an eye on uh, Jason Blake. He thinks he's going to be the next Elon Musk. Love it. And you can find out more about jason jb and the global soccer education by heading to facebook and searching for global soccer education jb thanks for joining us on the jod pod james i appreciate it thanks for the invitation and thoroughly enjoyed it awesome and thank you for joining us for today's interview on the jod pod to ensure you don't miss any of these episodes make sure you subscribe hit that like button and bang the bell and if you've got any questions for me or jb Leave them in the comment below and we definitely get back to each and every single one of them. Go and do what Jason has explained today. Go and build something and inspire the next generation. See you next time on the Jod Pod. If you enjoyed this interview, why don't you check out some of these other interviews that we've done on the Jod Pod. More inspirational CEOs, coaches, entrepreneurs, founders and authors. I'm sure there's something here that will inspire you to build something new.